I'll rise for the jury. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, on the jury, if you have difficulty hearing anyone, uh, please get my attention. Uh, and again, I'll ask that individual to speak up and repeat what it was that they said that you may have uh, not heard. Uh, likewise, if you have any difficulty seeing what's up on the screen, someone's in your way blocking you or whatever, again, just kind of get your hand up uh, so that I can direct the person to move in, in a position where they're not blocking anyone. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I did notice a couple times this morning when the attorneys are walking back to the podium, you're asked a question and your back will be to us. I didn't hear those two times. I didn't really hear the question. So. Okay. All right. So, yeah, if, if you don't hear it, you know, and I'll, I'll ask the attorney to, to repeat it. Okay. okay. For the court reporter for that matter. <laughs> All right. Ms. Van Coom, you may inquire. Thank you, Your Honor. Welcome back, Agent. Thank you. Thanks for coming back. Sure. We'll come back to where we left off, which was A145. Your Honor, if I may have the lights, please. Yes. We'll move on to A146. What is that? Um, this is the, uh, the belt that is buckled around her wrists, as well as the uh, blind cords that are also knotted and wrapped around her wrist. You said it's buckled. Do you mean it's actually, the buckle's actually in use on this? Yes. Okay. And you said it was blind cords? Yes. Did you, in your processing of the scene, find out where those cords had been taken from? Um, yes, we believe from the bedroom itself, um, the, the blinds that are in the bedroom, the cord was missing. Uh, it looked like it had been cut and the end was gone. Um, this, this portion that you would expect to see at the end of the cord was not present. And what is this wrapped around? Uh, her left and right wrists. A147. Um, this is just another photograph of the, of the bindings. Uh, I had unbuckled the, the first buckle, but this is to illustrate the knot that is actually in the cord. A148. Um, again, just another photograph of the ligatures from her wrists. A149. Um, we're working with the coroner's investigator to document this process as we go through um, examining her. Um, this is where you can see the uh, the electric blanket cord was wrapped fully around her head, and you can see where it's knotted right there. And at this point, had you removed anything from her face and head? Yes. What did you um, the, the, the white material that was saturated with blood has been removed. Um, this black fabric that you can see there uh, had not been removed, but that was what was partially stuffed in her mouth. A150. Again, working with the coroner's investigator, we were able to, to remove the cord that was around her neck. And what is that tape up there in the left-hand corner? Um, from the previous picture that we, we saw, the, the, the two pieces of tape, so this would be the opposite end, um, where you can see 27B up there in the corner. And Agent, is there, what are the... Um, what do you see kind of on the middle of the cord in the middle of the picture? Uh, there's, there's suspected blood and hair um, all the way around the cord, which I would anticipate because her head and neck was covered in blood as well. A151. So again, as we're working with the coroner's investigator, um, we're looking at her head and we pull her hair back and we see um, this wound. It's an incised wound or a excuse me, a stab wound in the back of the neck. So this is on the back of her neck? Correct, on the back of her neck. And you actually had to lift her hair up to find it? Correct. A152? Um, this is item 31. This is the, uh, the black material that was around her, her neck and her stuffed in her mouth. And then um, the white t-shirt, I believe, is what it is, that was over top of her head, knotted, saturated with blood. A153? She was wearing a, uh, like a gray spaghetti strap type top. It was removed and collected as evidence. Did she have anything on her, the lower half of her body? She did not. No underwear or pants? No. 
A-154. Um, after we removed her from the closet, uh, we found item 33, which is a pair of black panties that were uh, right there with her body or underneath her body. And that was after you had removed her? Yes. A-155. Um, this is just a closer photograph of, of the panties, item number 33, that were found in the closet. And what about this staining here? It looks kind of right where the door is. Yes. Um, that's, again, another saturation type of blood stain um, we would expect to find in the area of her body. A-156. Um, a close-up photograph of the recovered panties. A-157. So we began a search of the room after, um, at that point, and we found a couple additional items that we were interested in. Um, this is the drawer right there, the dresser right next to the closet. Um, it contained a uh, 34 and 35, both of which are knives. One's a utility knife, one's a steak knife. You said one's a steak knife? Yes. Did you later, as you continued to process the scene, did that steak knife look familiar to anything else you had seen? Yes, there were other knives in the butcher block um, that were similar to that downstairs in the kitchen. A-158. Closer photograph of the knife. The steak knife? The steak knife, I'm sorry, yes. A-159. This is a closer photograph of the utility knife, item 35. And at this point, why are you interested in collecting knives? Uh, based upon the injury to the back of her neck, uh, we're interested in any sharp object that could have been used. A160. Um, this is a photograph of the door that better illustrates the damage to that knob. Um, you can see how the door is cracked. Um, so once we had her removed, we could get a better photograph of the door. A161. Closer photograph of that damage to the door, closet door. A162. Um, this is when we closed the closet door and just, again, we want to document both sides of that door very well. So that's the exterior side. Did you find any blood staining on the exterior side of the door? No. Just on the inside? Yes. A163. Um, an additional photograph of that damage that we noted to the top of the closet door. A164. Um, this is from the blinds in the bedroom, and if you look here, it appears as though that cord has been cut, and that's consistent with the appearance of the cords that were wrapped around her wrist. A165. Um, this is a photograph of the butcher block from the knives that were downstairs in the kitchen. And, Agent, if you can, can you tell about how many knives are missing from this butcher block? Um, on the lower level where the steak knives are located, it appears there's four empty spaces. And then, and then I think in an earlier picture, was this cake covered? Yes. Did you uncover it? Yes, we uncovered it to see, to confirm what was in it, and it actually was a cake, so we took a picture of it. A166. Another photograph of that butcher block, or that uh, knife block, excuse me. And why is this significant to you at this time? Um, again, based upon the wound that's in the back of her neck, we thought um, any sharp object was relevant, and uh, observing that type of knife, we recalled seeing it downstairs, so we wanted to just photograph the, the knife block and the knives. A-167. Uh, there was a knife, believed to be the similar uh, manufacturer brand style um, of knife, and it was on the counter in the, in the kitchen. So. Um, just trying to account for knives that are missing and knives that are there. So we found this one. Let me have the lights, Your Honor. Let me just go make sure I have some of all the questions answered. Agent, did you take any blind swabs when you were actually processing Rachel Anderson's body? Yes. Did you take any of the cords? Yes. Explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, how, what's your process of taking these blind swabs of the cords versus I think later on you take swabs of her actual skin? 
Okay. So what's the difference? Why do both? Um, well, in this situation, you know, I'm interested in trying to find a DNA profile on these cords. Um, somebody had manipulated them, wound them around, knotted things. So there's a strong chance that we could find skin cells there. Um, her, so that's one set of swabs. So, so I did swab the, uh, the cords, um, the areas where I thought it could be handled around the knots and things like that. And we did collect those items, but I didn't, um, I didn't want to lose the potential to touch DNA there at the scene. So, we, so I swabbed the cords. Um, once they were removed, then we're treating her now as a separate entity because um, previous to the ligatures being placed on her, she may have been moved or touched by somebody. So um, I swabbed the skin, various areas of the skin uh, where she may have been touched. So once we removed those ligatures, we conducted further blind swabbing of like the wrists, um, the ankle areas, and, and there was other locations on her body we swabbed. <coughs> Kind of skip around, I apologize, but I want to make sure I hit every part of your report. Did you take a blind swab at all of the closet door? Of the closet door. Where she was found? I believe so. If I can refer to my report here. Um, I apologize. You look on page three, about halfway down. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so blind swab we, I collected from the exterior side of the knob, and it's item 47. Okay. And did you dust that closet door for fingerprints? Uh, yes, none were located on that door. Did you actually take a buckle swab of Rachel Anderson? Yes. Why do you do that? Well, a buckle swab is just a mouth swab. Um, we need to establish it, her DNA profile so that when our scientists are looking um, for foreign DNA on any of the items or, or her body, um, that excludes her from any of the profiles. And now I'm going to ask you, do you ever make a sketch of your crime scenes that you process? Yes. I you may. I'm going to show you the skin parts as B as a boy, one and two. Do you recognize those? Yes. What are those? These are the diagrams I prepared for this case. And do you prepare those for every case? Um, not every case, but if there's a large quantity of evidence, um, it seems to be helpful. So. And do you do that? through a computer program, or how do you do that? Yes, we have a computer-aided program that allows us to do diagramming. Okay. Your Honor, if I, no, you're fine. No, that's me. So it's marked as B1, and I know it's a kind of tiny picture, but is that, what is this, that sketch of? Um, this is the first floor, uh, all of the evidence collected from the first floor. And are, what are all those little yellow dots? Um, so the yellow dots uh, have numbers that corresponds with the placards that we've seen. And uh, this marks the approximate location that the evidence was recovered from. And B2, what is that a sketch of? This is the second floor. And again, the little yellow markers we see? Yes, those are the placarded items of evidence that were collected. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, when you're collecting evidence, is there anything that you create to help you keep track of what is picked up when and where? Yes, we, we, we generate a receipt, an, an evidence inventory log. Can I approach, Your Honor? You may. as State's Exhibit C. Do you recognize that? I do, yes. What is that? This is my evidence log for this case. Okay. And I'm going to let you keep that up here because okay. we're going to start going through it. Okay. <clears throat> A2, 
agent, when you collect these items of evidence, what do you put them in? Um, you know, it can be a host of containers. We typically prefer paper because paper uh, allows things to breathe. We collect a lot of DNA evidence. We don't want it to become moldy. Um, so typically cardboard boxes, envelopes, paper bags. May I put your honor? You may. Um, Uh, yes. Before I move on, are these reports that I've shown you all true and accurate copies of what you created? Yes. Yes. You may. And all the photos that you saw, are those true and accurate copies of the photos as you remember them? Yes. Seeing that day? Yes. All right, I'm going to show you to Mark at C1. Whose initials are those? Uh, those are mine. And then what is that? Uh, that's the date in which the seal was placed. And why do you do that? Um, it's integrity purposes. That way if somebody would come behind me and take that tape off there, we could tell that it doesn't line up and somebody's tampered with it. So it's, it's just a tamper precaution. What is C1? Uh, C1 is an auto zone receipt. And again, why are you collecting receipts? Um, receipts can, again, it can help give us some investigative information about time and date and location and possibly uh, account information, credit card information. Are those all considered C1, all those receipts? Yes. Yeah. Show you marked as C2. Again, do you recognize your signature and date? Yes. What is C2? Uh, those are this, the Swisher Suite pack that was found under the coffee table. And again, why would you collect a package? Um, for something like that, potential DNA item, um, maybe latent fingerprints at a later time. Well, this, is the, this is what's been marked as C3. Now, when you collect all this evidence, what do you do with it once you've collected it? Um, it is transferred over to the requesting agency. So all of this evidence went to Columbus Police Department. And after it goes there, do you ever see it again? Not until court, typically. Okay. So if it was sent to a detective that looked at it for a phone, you wouldn't know that? Right. I wouldn't know, necessarily know that. Recognize your signature? Yes. What is C3? Um, this would be the cell phone that was on the coffee table in the case. Yeah. And when you get a cell phone, is there anything special that you do with it? Typically, no. Not, not us. We package it and send it. Number four is the cigar butt. Show you some mark to C4. Again, recognize your signature. I do. Date. Yes, cigar butt's on there. And mark a C5. Recognize your signature? Yes. What is that? It's a 
just a coffee mug from the coffee table. And again, why would you collect a drinking cup? Um, somebody had to handle it. Well, somebody potentially could have handled it. Um, if they've drank out of it, those are great sources for, for DNA and fingerprints. I'm sorry, fingerprints and fingerprints. Sorry, Carl, I'm trying not to crinkle too much. I'll talk into it. Um, this is the Arby's cup with the drinking straw. All right, we're going to start going a little bit out of order, so we're not here all day. Okay. Uh, C9. Uh, that's the water bottle, the smart water water bottle. And where was that collected from? Um, I believe that was on the, yeah, it was on the, uh, the coffee table in the living room. C7. <clears throat> yes. What are these? Uh, these are the cigarette butts and the cigar butts that were on the uh, coffee table. C8. Uh, that's the glass smoking pipe. C12. No. Oh, are these swabs? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this was uh, this was the blind swab from the back door, the interior, the, the doorknob itself. Okay. And is this what your swabs look like? Yes. Yep. Okay. Just a little paper. Mm -hmm. Yep. What do you do after you swab? So when we swab, I mean, it's essentially like a it looks like a Q-tip. And we swab the area, we'll take it and put it right back into its original packaging, and then we take that packaging with the swab and put it into an envelope. Number VC 13, number 13 on your list. Okay. Again, another swab. This is a blind swab from the, the rear door's deadbolt latch. C14, should be number 14 on your report. Again, another blind swab. This is the exterior side of the doorknob at the back door. Again, is that your, are those your initials yes. and your ad date? There you go. Yes. And number 15. Um, 15 would be the swabs of that suspected blood stain on the carpet inside of her bedroom uh, near the foot of the bed. Sure, that's fine. Um, this was from the living room. That's the case containing the laptop that was found next to the couch. If you recall, was the laptop on when you were there? I don't believe it was. You're to C16. Dan, do you see your initial? I do. I'm not going to pull this all the way out, but what was 16? Uh, this is the white sheet from the bed. And from what you can see, are there, so is there things written on the sheet? Yes. Did you write that? No. It's typically when it's processed, it's not uncommon to see scientists make marks so they know where they're dealing with and what area. So you don't draw anything on it when you collect it, you just put it in the bag? Um, in this case, I didn't draw on anything. Sometimes I will do that to direct the scientist to look in a specific area, but I didn't have to do that with this case. And number 17, C17. Yeah, this is the red bed sheet from her bed. All right, and C10.
group. <laughs> what is C10? Um, C10 is the purse found in the living room and its contents. Uh, yes, there was. Did you take individual pictures of all of them? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't believe I photographed everything from her purse. It was just all together. I'm going to direct your attention to a particular receipt. Okay. What receipt is this for? Um, this is from Arby's. <coughs> yeah, of course. Can you tell, I know it's a little bit hard, but can you tell a date on that Arby's receipt? Uh, yes, it looks like um, January 28th, 2018. And what time? Uh, I see 7.32. Would that make sense to you, given what evidence you found in the living room of the uh, food? Yes. Yes, it would. I'm sorry, on that Arby's receipt, did that say 7.32 p.m.? I should have clarified. Um, I couldn't make out a.m. or p.m. I just saw 7.32. So this is the uh, the gray and kind of dark colored comforter from her bed. So not the one that not the blanket that was on her, the one that was on the bed. Correct. Okay. okay number twenty two on yours, that should be C twenty two for the record. I'll let you answer so poor Carla can hear. I'm sorry. Twenty two. Yes. What is that? Uh, I'm sorry. This is a this is the iron that's uh, been knotted. The cord has been knotted. I might ask your help over here, Agent. Sure. Agent, okay. if you could show the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that iron. And is there, what is there within that knot? Um, that's what we believe to be suspected blood and hair within the knot itself. And then as we, as I've discussed earlier, there's, uh, there's blood near the plug as well. And then we can see the cut in the cord here. This is the brown bathroom from the from the bed itself. This was on the bed, the bathroom. Yeah, I think previously I may have described it as a as a blanket, but it's actually a bathroom. Bathroom. Yeah. Thank you. 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 A pair of glasses, a white cup, and then a clear water bottle. Yeah, the glasses are inside the cup. 
And again, at the time you're collecting this evidence, do you have any idea if it's going to be of value or not? No, not at all. Then number 20 on yours, C20 for the record. Um, this is the red pillow case from the bed. And so far, has everything you've seen been in the same or similar condition as when you collected it that day? Yes. Again, do you recognize, I know your initials are a little crumpled. Sure, yeah, those are my initials. This will be number 26 on yours. Okay. C26. This is the large pink pillow that was found near her head in between uh, her head and the closet door. Yes. Could you tell if there was any blood on that from what you could see? Um, I don't recall. Um, I think we just collected it because it was so close and put it in a bag knowing that it might be involved, so. C27. Um, this is the heating blanket cord uh, from the doorknob and around the victim's neck. So this would be the portion that was actually around her neck that was knotted. And that was the part around her neck, you said? Uh, yes. Okay. And was this the one that had one full rotation around? Correct. This is the other portion of that cord. So this is what um, you observed around uh, the doorknob on the exterior side of that closet door. And then this material was also wrapped around the doorknob. And that's where I cut it off. And Agent, if we can, just really quickly. <clears throat> About how long is this cord? Sure. Knotted. Yes, they're still a knot right here. So this is what was wrapped around the outside of the closet door? Yes. This was, uh, this was the tan blanket that was wrapped around her body. <coughs> okay. uh, this should be the pieces of the belt or the straps. Um, so there's the one, and then there's the other that appeared to be cut on that end. And Detective, what's intertwined in yeah, that part? Yeah, there's still hair inside of this, wrapped around it. This, this will be the power strip uh, that we found on the, on the bedroom floor. And uh, there's suspected blood on the cord. 
um, as, as well as the area in here. And again, was that blood, in your opinion, was that transfer? It was just a transfer stain, yes. We'll go to number 23. Okay, 23 would be the uh, brown leather bag or satchel that we found on the bedroom floor. In fact, you could point out, ladies and gentlemen, where is the blood splatter? Sure. Um, suspected blood's right here. There's a very tiny stain right here, and that's what I believe to be a spatter stain of blood. And this was all found in Rachel's room? Yes, in Rachel's room. Thirty-three or C thirty-three for the record. Again, whose initials were those? Those are my initials. What is this? Those are the black panties that we found in the closet. And where were they found in the closet? Or let me back up. Did you see them when you first came through the room? No. Why not? Um, they were either next to or underneath her body. This was the white, um, the white shirt that was wrapped around her head, and you can see the suspected blood. And there's still hair. And there's still hair. And then this was the piece of black material that was knotted around her neck and then partially stuffed into her mouth. This was the bindings that were, or the ligatures that were around her wrists. Uh, it's the, it's the white belt material with buckle, and then the cord that we believe was from the blinds. Are they still knotted? Yeah, very much so. C32 for the record. What is this? Uh, this is the gray tank top or spaghetti strap top that Rachel was wearing. And what are those? Did you draw on this tank top? No. This is likely from the, the scientists when they were examining these stains. This is number 29, or C29. I need your help again. Help sure. Help. What are these? So this is the hair dryer and the cord that was wrapped around um, her ankles. And then this is the curling iron that was again wrapped between her ankles and um, her wrists and essentially used as a hog tie. Are they still actually partially intertwined with that? Um, actually, I think we they're mostly apart at this point. Okay. Did you have to cut them to get them apart? Yes. How many times did you have to cut them to get them unknotted? Um, yeah, I believe we just had to cut the hair dryer off and the curling iron off, and we were able to slide the rest of the cords out. C33 
35 or C35 for the record? Sure. Uh, take it I think it's stuck in there. I'm not sure. Can that one come out? Okay. This is the utility knife found from the dresser in her bedroom. And then 34, C34 for the record. Sure. This is the... This is the kitchen knife that we found, uh, or the steak knife, I'm sorry, steak knife that was found in the dresser in her bedroom. And this is one that was similar to the knives downstairs? Yes. Go with number 48 or C48. Okay. What is this? Um, these are the AccuTrans casts of the developed latent fingerprints <laughs> on the interior side of the front door. That's what they look like. C36, or 36 on yours. Sure. Um, this is a swab I collected from her, from Rachel's right wrist. And again, when you say right wrist, do you mean with the ligatures on or off? Um, this would have been after we removed the ligatures. 37, C37. Sure. Uh, that is a swab of Rachel's left wrist. C38. Uh, that would be a swab from her right forearm. Why right forearm? Again, anything, any, any location where we think that somebody may have pulled her or, or had any you know, contact with her. So we're, we split these out just a little bit, wrist, forearm, uh, ankles. 39, C39? Uh, 39 is a swab of her left forearm. C40? C40 is a swab of her right ankle. Why swab her ankle? Um, again, we're looking for any skin cells that some, that's not hers, that could be somebody else. So if she was pulled or drugged, obviously uh, she was wrapped up. So somebody had contact with her, um, with her arms and her wrists. So we're trying to find out who that is and if they left their DNA there. <clears throat> 41, C41? Oh, 41 is a swab of the, uh, yeah, the left ankle. Swab of the left ankle. C42? Um, this is the swab uh, that I collected of her inner thigh, both inner thighs and her uh, pelvic area. All right, now let's talk about that a little bit. When did you collect that? Uh, as she's laying in the bag, uh, we're working with, with the um, coroner's investigators, so we have access to her and we're collecting these samples. When you say her inner thighs, do you mean top or the actual inside of her thigh? The inside of her thighs. Okay. Why would you take those swabs? Um, she's nude from the waist down. She has no panties on. I'm not sure if she was a victim of a sexual assault. Um, that's a, a very common area that the suspect can have contact with. So, again, I'm trying to, to collect uh, any type of foreign skin cells. 43? Uh, 43, and, and along those same lines, um, given the fact she has no panties on, we will also swab her nipples. So right and left both collected together. Okay. That's a swab from there. And again, this is just on your training and experience as yes. to where DNA could possibly be after a sexual assault? Yes, it's a common, common locations to try to collect saliva or skin cells. C C44? Uh, this is the DNA standard, or what we refer to as buccal standard, buccal swabs. It's just a swab from her mouth. C45? Uh, C45 is the swab I collected uh, from um, the cords wrapped around her ankles prior to removing them. And again, why did you do it prior to removing them? 
there could be those skin cells on the outside of those ligatures. So I wanted to collect those before we took them off. Uh, sometimes when you move things, you can lose those skin cells. 46. Um, 46 is a swab from the bathroom faucet handle. Okay. Why swab the bathroom faucet handle? Uh, sometimes suspects want to clean up or clean themselves up after, uh, after something like this happens. And so they will typically go in and clean up in the bathroom. So I wanted to see if there was a foreign DNA profile on that sink or the, yeah, the sink handle in the bathroom. And the bathroom is on the second floor, right? Yes. So that would have been where, I guess, the closest sink that he could have gone to. Correct. C47. Uh, this is a swab from the bedroom closet door. Yes. And every, all the evidence that I've shown you, is that in the same or substantially similar condition as when you saw it? It is, yes. Agent, when you are finished um, collecting evidence, do you do another walkthrough of the apartment? Yes. Why? Um, just to evaluate what we've collected, um, to search additional areas. In this situation, myself, the other agent, and then the two detectives from Columbus Police Department uh, just collected a, conducted a secondary search. If you do the initial scene, if I may approach your honor. You may. When you do the initial scene, are you ever called out to do subsequent scenes from the same investigation? Yes. Tell me how that works. Um, the requesting agency will uh, contact us and, and say and make another request and say, hey, we have additional scenes. Can you help us out? Did that happen in this case? Yes. Were you actually called out to the Columbus Police garage? I guess it would have been the early the next morning. Um, yes. And did you make a report much like you did with the scene in the apartment? Yes. You may. I'm going to show you this is marked as B as in dog. Do you recognize that? Yes, this was uh, my investigative report from the processing of Rachel's vehicle. Do you treat vehicle scenes any differently than you do a living room or an apartment or something like that? No, generally speaking, the process is the same. Did you dust for prints at all in Rachel's car? I did. Tell me about that. Um, so I dusted the exterior surface as well as the interior surfaces of the windows. Um, they're just a very common uh, routine area that we dust and we, uh, we locate prints in those areas. So I dusted the inside of her vehicle and uh, the outside of her vehicle. Were there any prints of value that you found? Um, I did collect uh, some developed latent prints. Um, from the passenger side of the vehicle, uh, and they were entered into evidence. Okay. How did you collect them? Uh, again, with the same process, I used volcanic ash uh, and a fingerprint brush. These uh, prints specifically were not collected with uh, AccuChance casting material, but actually a tape lift. So they were placed on the sheets of acetate and then returned to the agency. And again, do you know when you're collecting fingerprints if they'll be of sufficient quality to actually yield any results? No. Did you collect any blind swabs from Rachel's vehicle? Yes. Where did you swab? 
Um, uh, just a normal process on a vehicle is we will swab all interior door handles as well as the steering wheel. So that's what was collected inside of her vehicle. Why those places? Again, just typically places that people touch. Uh, they're great locations to pick up those epithelial cells. Um, if somebody other than Rachel was driving that vehicle, uh, maybe it would give us a name uh, of, of, to assist in the investigation. So that's why we collected them. And do you take photos again? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Do you recognize these photos? Yes. What are those photos? Um, this is this is Rachel's uh, Chevy Spark, Chevrolet Spark. Uh, that was, I believe, recovered from the parking lot, towed, and then they asked me to process it in the impound garage. Yes, these are my photos. Are they true and accurate of when you took them on that day? Yes. Commissioner Pollishar. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. You may. So it's marked as a D1. What is that? Uh, this is the front of our vehicle. D2? Um, the side. And I just continue going around the vehicle, uh, photographing all sides of it. So okay. um, as we continue. Do you remember what color this car was? Um, it was a, it was a, uh, like a light gray or almost like a champagne color, if I recall. D3? Uh, the driver's side of the vehicle. D4. Um, again, the driver's side of the vehicle. D5. The rear of the vehicle. D6. The rear of the vehicle. D7. The passenger side. D8. Uh, this is looking into the driver front driver's side of the vehicle. D9. Uh, the interior side of the front driver door. And just to save a little bit of time, did you end up collecting that Pepsi can? Um, I believe so. Yes, I did, as item number two. Yes. D10. Uh, this is the front driver floorboard. D11. This is what I would call the rear driver side of the vehicle, inside. D12. Interior side of the rear driver door. D13. This is the rear passenger side. D14. A photograph of the front passenger side of the vehicle or interior of the vehicle. D15. Interior side of the front passenger door. D16. Uh, a closer photograph showing the front uh, passenger seat. D17. Uh, this is a uh, placard item number one. Um, it was found, I think, partially under the seat. You can't really see it, but it's a, uh, um, it's a glass smoking pipe. D18. Number two is the Pepsi can that was collected from the front driver door pocket. D19. This is the glass smoking pipe. And again, is it laying, what's that laying on? Uh, just an envelope. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you make an evidence log for Ms. Anderson's car? Yes, I did. <coughs> may I approach? You may. I'm going to show you some marks. Is it a key? Does that look familiar to you? Yes. What is that? Uh, this is my evidence log for the Chevrolet Spark. smoking pipe and again much like the other evidence do you see your initials I do and the date you collected it yes E2 uh, this is the Pepsi can from the interior door pocket front driver's side
E3. This should be the, ac yeah, the acetate sheets uh, with the tape lifts of the development prints. <coughs> What's that little drawing on there? It's a terrible drawing uh, that I uh, draft, just so I have some understanding of where I collected the prints from. So it's just a rough sketch with notes, so I know where the prints are. That's a car? I, it's not oh, good. Goodness. Four, do you recognize your signature? I do. Those are my initials. What is the E for? This is a blind swab from the um, front driver door handle, the interior door handle. E5. Um, this is the interior the swab from the interior rear driver door handle. Interior handle, uh, front passenger door. E7. Uh, this is a blind swab, the interior handle of the rear passenger door. And E8. This would be a blind swab from the steering wheel. And when you swab the steering wheel, where do you swab it at? Typically all the way around um, on the back side where you have the best grip. Um, sometimes the, the cross sections where people tend to rest their fingers and steer. Um, just any place that we can think of that you'd have the most contact. Are all, all of those true and accurate or excuse me, of the same or substantially similar condition as when you saw them and collected them? Yes. And are, is your report and your evidence log true and accurate as you created them? Yes. If I may approach. <clears throat> and what did you do with all that evidence once you collected it from Rachel's car? Uh, it was released to the Columbus Police Department. Now, I know you did a couple scenes before this, but I'm going to jump ahead to try to keep everything together. I'm going to take you to February 13th, 2018. Were you still in your current capacity? Yes. Okay. Did you receive a call from Detective Hughes uh, regarding evidence concerning this case? Yes. Your Honor, could you? Thank you. Number two, please. Right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday uh, I indicated uh, or explained to you uh, uh, a stipulation. Okay, stipulation uh, is facts that are agreed upon by the parties in the case. Okay, I'm going to read to you uh, another stipulation. Uh, again, uh, this is what has been agreed upon by the parties. Please listen up. The parties agree and stipulate that if called to testify, Patricia Anderson, mother of Rachel Anderson, would state that on February the 13th, 2018, she was cleaning out boxes of items from Rachel's apartment. She found a knife with blood and hair and immediately reached out to Detective Art Hughes, informing him of the discovery. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Agent, where did you go after you received the call from Detective Hughes? Um, I went to Rachel's parents' house. And again, did you create a report, much like you did with the other scene? Yes. You may. To show you some marked F12. Do you recognize that? I do. What is that? Uh, this is my investigative report um, detailing the recovery of the knife. Explain what you did when you arrived at Rachel's mother's house. Um, I talked to uh, Patricia. Um, who explained to me that um, a few days previous they had, uh, she and some fr 
family friends had went to Rachel's apartment and cleaned out all of the contents and brought them uh, back, back home to her house. Um, she said as she was going through uh, the contents, she located in one of the boxes, she located a knife uh, that contained what she believed to be blood and hair. Uh, again, she contacted um, the Columbus Police Department, the detective there. He contacted me and I immediately responded to the house to make recovery of that knife. And did you take photos like you did with the other scenes? I did. You may. Can I show you some marks? Is F1 through F11? Okay. Do you recognize those? Yes. What are those? Um, these are the photographs uh, uh, that I took of the contents of the box as well as the knife um, that Mrs. Anderson uh, provided to me. And then this is a photograph of the block, I believe, from the... Um, still at the parents' house, but from Rachel's apartment, so. Are they all true and accurate photos? Do you remember them? Yes. Commissioner Napolitano? Any objection? No objection. You may. <clears throat> Looking at F1. What is that? Um, this is the box that Patricia uh, said that she located the items in. To the left are the items that were in that box from Rachel's apartment. And if you can see, can you tell us, I mean, what do these appear to be? Um, to the left on the purple uh, bag or paper, um, I believe that's like a, a candle holder, a skull candle holder. Um, to the right, I think those are just lights or, or some sort of strung up, regardless their skulls, I'm not sure exactly what they were for, but. F2? Uh, this was just the empty box. This is the box that she found all these items in. F3? Closer photograph of those candlesticks. F4? Uh, this was a bag that she found the knife. I, I, no, I'm sorry, I think I need to refer to my report. She may have actually placed um, the knife in that bag. At any rate, the bag was with a knife when I got there. F5. So this is the knife that she located, um, the suspected blood and hair on that knife. F6. This is the opposite side of the knife. Um, you can see the manufacturer's name on the blade, again, consistent with the knives that we observed at her apartment. F7. Taking it off of the bag itself to get some better photographs. Um, just want a, a plain piece of paper. F8. Uh, this is the tip of the blade. I wanted to get a closer photograph of that. Why? Um, at the time, you know, I'm not unsure if it's broken or not. It appears broken to me. Like the tip could be snapped off. Um, it's hard to tell in this photograph. F9. Um, this is, I just put a tape measure in there to get an overall length of the knife. And about how long was it? Uh, about nine inches. About F10. This is the butcher block um, from Rachel's apartment that her mother had. Uh, it's the same one we saw the night that we were processing. And I just wanted to take a picture of that. You can see the manufacturer is the same as the knife she found. F11. Um, and this is just another photograph of a knife that she had located. It was with the butcher block, I believe. Or not the butcher block, the knife block. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I may approach? You may. I'm going to show you what's been marked as F. Yes. Again, do you recognize this? That's my initials, yes. And the date? Yes. Is this the bag that it was yes. used on it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that the knife that you recovered that day? Yes. And what is that? kind of where the uh, actual blade hits the handle. What does that appear to be? 
Uh, uh, well, there's uh, hair and suspected blood across the entirety of the knife. Is that in the same or substantially similar form as when you found it that day? Yes. Agent, when you looked around the house, when you were at Rachel's home, did you look in cereal boxes? Uh, no, not in the cereal boxes. Did you look in all the drawers downstairs in the kitchen? I believe we did, yes. Okay. Did you look everywhere in that house? Um, apparently not. We didn't find the knife. Is this like on TV where you guys are taking up pillowcases and cushions and dumping everything out of a house? Um, we do a very exhaustive search. Uh, is it like TV? Absolutely not. Um, but uh, we did our best twice to make sure we didn't leave anything behind. Unfortunately, we did. And in addition, where was Rachel's body found? Uh, she was in the closet in her bedroom. Was that on the second floor? Yes. To your understanding, where was this box located at? Um, I'm not sure where the box was located. Okay. Um, I don't recall that. And again, reviewing my pictures after we found out this information, I looked back. I can't locate that box uh, in my photographs. I don't know where the box was. And again, did you notice, where is it? did we ever account for all of the knives that were missing from her knife block? No. All right, Agent, I'm going to ask you to go back now to January, um, oh, excuse me. Earlier in February of 2018, were you asked to come to a different scene regarding this case? Yes. At that point, um, were you asked to come process a house where a suspect in this crime had lived? Yes. And did you make a report as you did with the other scenes we've talked about? Yes, I did. You may. Uh, this is my investigative report detailing the search of 1338 East 15th Avenue in Columbus. Now, before you went to this home, did you talk to Detective Hughes? Yes. Did he ask you to look for certain things of interest? Yes. What were those things? Um, he was looking for clothing specifically, um, and any uh, certain clothing that the suspect they believe was wearing at the time. Um, they had received information, um, as well as um, clothing tags. I believe there was some purchases made with Rachel's card. Um, so they were looking for tags, clothing, receipts, and then specific clothing uh, individuals may have been wearing. Were there any, any electronics they were asking you to search for? Um, yes, yeah, so on something like this, they request cell phones. Anything that have electronic data on it, we're asked to take as well. And again, when you're processing this house, are you still using your own training and experience to look for things that could be of significance? Sure, absolutely. is G1 through G57. Okay. Do you recognize these photos? Sure. <coughs> what are those photos of? Those are the photographs of the 1338 East 15th Avenue that I processed. Permission to publish, Your Honor? Any objection? No objection. And again, before you go through this house, do you take the same kind of precautionary measures to make sure you're not contaminating it? Yes.
G1, what is that? Um, this is the exterior of the residence. That's the front door to your right. G2? The front door to the residence. Is that the address? Yes, 1338. G3? Uh, again, just an overall photograph of the front of the residence. G4? Um, as you enter the front of the residence, this would be like a dining area as well as the kitchen. G5? A photograph of the dining area. G6? Uh, this is the kitchen. G7? Uh, the kitchen extends into a back room. This is just a photograph of that back or side door. G8? Um, I think the back room is actually a laundry room. This is a photograph of that area. G9? The washer and dryer. G10? Uh, this is a photograph from the kitchen back toward the front door in that living room area, or that dining room area, excuse me. G11? Photograph of the kitchen. G12? Uh, this is from the living room extending back down the hallway to where the bedrooms are. G13? Um, just a photograph again of that hallway. G14? Um, there were multiple bedrooms um, at the end of this hallway just photographing the entrances to those bedrooms. G15. Photograph of the bathroom. G16. Another photograph of the bathroom. G17. A photograph of the entrance to one of the bedrooms. G18. This is a photograph of one of the bedrooms. G19. Same bedroom. G20. Uh, this is a photograph of items that I observed on top of the bed. G21. A uh, pill bottle with the name Loretta Pardon on it. G22. Again, that's the same bedroom, just a different perspective. G23. The closet of that bedroom. G24. Uh, this is moving into another bedroom. G25. Uh, an overall of that bedroom. G26. Another photograph of just some items laying there next to the bed. G27. Additional items laying next to the bed. G28. Um, this is just a photograph of the bed itself. G29. And a, again, another photograph of that bed. G30. Um, this is a photograph of the third bedroom walking in. G31. Photograph of a dresser with a cell phone in that bedroom on top of it. G32. Uh, this is a photograph of the bed inside that bedroom. G G33. Uh, photograph from the closet. G34. And uh, another photograph of the closet. It's, it's got uh, a name printed there on the door. G35. Um, this is a closer photograph from that same bedroom with the cell phone on the dresser. G36. Um, just a, a laundry hamper there in that room. G37. Clothes inside of a closet. G38. Uh, another photograph of that closet. G39. Um, this is a photograph walking back out um, into that living room area. G40. Uh, these are photographs on a um, lamp stand inside the living room. G41. Uh, this is a couch inside of the living room. G42. Uh, the other couch inside the living room. G43. Uh, this is item number one, cell phone. So is this an item you collected? Yes. G44. The Ohio driver's license of Deborah Pardon. And why'd you photograph this? Uh, it was found in a wallet in that room. So I wanted to document whose license and possibly whose wallet that was. G45. Also found an Ohio identification card for Christine Eubanks. G46. Um, this is just a dark, or I'm sorry, a brown colored hat. Was that one of the items that you were asked to look for? Yes. G47. Um, again, receipts. Uh, I believe I was uh, advised that this uh, Rachel's card may have been used at a casino. Sustain. So, um, hold on. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Restate, rephrase, or ask another question. 
Were you asked to look for things associated with a casino? Yes. And is that why you took these pictures? Yes. G48? Um, these were the items that were collected as number one um, from the bedroom. And that was all within the same bedroom? Yes. And again, did you put them in a little folder behind all these items? Yes. G49? Um, again, just documenting receipts and items um, and names. So I'm taking photographs of things associated to casinos. G50? Uh, again, players' cards from Scioto Downs, I believe, is one of them. Just getting names um, and cards, photographed, documented. And is Deborah Pardon one of those names? Yes, it is. G51? Uh, that's the cell phone from top of the dresser um, in, in the second bedroom. It's collected as item number two. G52? Closer photograph of that cell phone. G53? Uh, just turned the cell phone over so we could see the manufacturer. It's Motorola. G54? Another um, reward card with Loretta Pardon's name on it. G55? Uh, these were assorted... Uh, tags, you can see uh, on the bed here, looks like there's some children's clothes. G56. So I photographed the, uh, the tags themselves a little closer. And then, Agent, what does this lower tag say? What's that? Uh, it's city, yeah, I'm sorry, it's city trends. G57. Uh, so that's item number three, I collected those tags. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> Excuse me. Agent, did you observe any locks on the doors in those rooms? Yes, there were um, hasps and padlocks on uh, at least two of the doors, maybe all three, the bedrooms. And Agent, did you make a evidence log like you did with the other scenes? Yes. Vancouver. This may be a good time to go ahead and take our afternoon break. Because you see me struggling with the glove, is that why? <laughs> you trying to save me, Judge? <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we get you back in the jury room at 3.20, okay, at 3.20, again, remember,